the wake of the pandemic, organizations and industries across the globe were forced to reimagine work and ensure business continuity. So as a result, over the next decade, carriers face an unprecedented opportunity to shift the center of work and corporate investment with it from commercial real estate to the network. And according to Aurea CEO Scott Brighton, this is worth trillions of dollars. But it requires new thinking about the future of work. Hello, everybody. My name is Chloe Richardson, and welcome to our Cloud City Live stage here in Barcelona. We are, of course, joined by our physical audience, but we're also live broadcasting to our virtual audience who are in every corner of the globe. Hello, great to see you. But as we call them at Telco DR, our Zoomies. So we're shortly going to be joined by Scott Brighton, who is here to share his insights on this new vision, the current trends, and the generational opportunity this transformation represents for the telecom industry. Now, a bit more about Scott. So Scott leads Aurea's executive team in defining the mission and strategy, which he balances with his passion for spending time with clients, ensuring that his ears are always on the telecom ground. I'm looking forward to hearing his perspective and welcome all of our audience members, physical or virtual, to join us after his presentation for a live audience Q&A. Don't forget, also keep your eyes peeled for those Cloud City Quest QR codes. Collecting those codes means that you can start earning points to win one of our incredible Cloud City Quest prizes. Before we welcome Scott to the stage, here is a short introductory video to really help visualize the way the world of work is changing to help us set the scene. Enjoy. How we work is not working. When offices were shuttered during the pandemic, people felt isolated when working at home. Now that offices are starting to reopen, employees expect greater flexibility and support. With employees working from different places, information is siloed, knowledge isn't being shared, and culture is suffering. Business output and employee satisfaction are at risk. But it doesn't have to be this way. Imagine people working together, innovating and driving value without having to go into an office. Imagine having meetings and events taking place all over the world and knowing they are all connected and operating as a network. Imagine being able to engage with employees and colleagues in ways that are personal, meaningful and compelling. Not only is that future possible, it's already happening. There already exists a richer work experience that brings the best of work from home and the traditional office experience together as never before. No matter where they might be sitting, down the hall, across campus, or on the other side of the world, your team can now be together, share information, and be more productive. You can solve problems, share ideas, and build community. No more barriers, no more hiring that prioritizes geography over talent. But there is so much more that is possible. We are living in unprecedented times. There are new challenges, new expectations, and new opportunities when it comes to how and from where we do our work. The power to redefine the future of work is in our hands. Are you ready for what happens next? And now, without further ado, please welcome to our stage, Scott Brighton. Good morning, Scott. Thank you so much for joining us here live in Barcelona. Great to be here, Chloe. Thank Over you. to you. All right, my name is Scott Brighton. I am CEO of Aurea, a global software company focused on building the platform for the future of the work. And as that video showed, the way we work is long overdue for an upgrade and what the future of work will look like, well, that has yet to be fully defined. So that's what I'm here to talk with you about. Today, I want to share three things with you. First, I'm going to highlight the big trends that are reshaping work. Second, I'm going to describe how companies are grappling with these changes. And finally, I'm going to share our vision of a future of work that represents a once-in-a-generation, multi-trillion-dollar opportunity for carriers. So the idea of the office, 
people gathering in one place to do work together dates all the way back to ancient Rome. And for the past 300 years, since the old Admiralty office in London was built, the physical office has been the center of work and commerce. And over that time, the argument has been made that work is only possible in an office. So it's not surprising that the office building became the physical manifestation of the company, both workspace and trophy. And companies have spent fortunes on these monuments. Transamerica Building, San Francisco, 225 million. Hearst Tower, New York, 500 million. Apple spent a whopping $5 billion on their new headquarters. And that's just here in the United States. The Shanghai Tower, 2.4 billion. Shard in London, 1.9 billion. Burj Khalifa, Dubai, 1.8 billion. Just a few of the dozens of multi-billion dollar office complexes being built around the world. And while all this money is being invested in real estate, more and more people have begun working remotely, untethered by technology. And as we all witness, the shift towards remote work became seismic with the arrival of the pandemic 16 months ago. Overnight, office buildings that were the center of work were empty. And this forced us to quickly figure out a lot about work, including one thing that surprised us. Many people liked working from home. No long commutes, better work-life balance, nobody waltzing into your office when you're trying to finish a memo so you can take your kid to the park again. And the data supports this preference. Most people are, in fact, more individually productive and experience less stress at home. But note that I said individually productive. So put a pin in that idea because I'm gonna come back to it in just a minute. So companies are responding by rewriting their rules to try to offer greater flexibility, retooling their technology to enable that flexibility. And now a staggering 87% of companies say they are rethinking their real estate strategy over the next 12 months given employee preference for a hybrid work model. And this is where the opportunity comes in. Global commercial real estate is a $10 trillion market. That's five times larger than the global communications business. Companies spend a staggering 10% of revenue on buildings. But over the next decade, we could see an unprecedented transfer of investment from commercial real estate into the network, your networks. And the network has a chance to become the new center of work, displacing the office building the same way that Netflix displaced physical video rental or Amazon is displacing physical retailing. That transfer is worth trillions of dollars to carriers. But, and it is a big but. This future is far from assured, only when the network can fully replace today's glass, concrete, steel office jungles, can that $10 trillion a year that's currently being spent on commercial real estate flow to carriers. And so, why is it far from assured? Well, the answer is, today's virtual work experience doesn't quite measure up. And for those of you watching the live stream right now, those working remotely and missing the opportunity to connect with colleagues, make new contacts, close deals, you know this better than anyone. Many corporate leaders have also come to hate corporate work. J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon was on CNBC about a month ago when he said he was done with it. And he'll do whatever it takes to get people back into the office. Apple CEO Tim Cook 
is requiring employees to be in the office three days a week over howls of protests from his employees. One CEO wrote an op-ed piece in the Washington Post where she said that she was going to deny benefits to any employee that didn't show up for work. And while there's a temptation to look at this and dismiss it as an artifact of old school leaders who don't get it, there is actually bottom line justification behind this brewing revolt against remote and hybrid work. Today, remote work is powered almost entirely by communications tools. Things like video conferencing tools like Zoom, chat tools like Teams or Slack, instant messaging, Skype, email. We are communicating more than ever. The volume of chat messages, email messages, video conferences has doubled over the last 12 months. But what we're no longer doing is connecting. Microsoft recently produced a study on the usage of their product, Microsoft Teams. And what they found highlights the problem starkly. The number of people that each individual is communicating with has declined by an order of magnitude. Not 10%, an order of magnitude. We are talking all of the time, but with a smaller and smaller group of people. We're suffering from a deluge of chatter, but a trickle of new insights and new relationship building. Employees, as a result, are feeling more isolated, disconnected, exhausted, and now overwhelmed with all this noise. And even more concerning, our ability to grow knowledge build trust-based relationships, and co cultivate role models and mentors is being stunted. Organizational connection and cohesion are evaporating. People's networks are withering. And the inclusive culture that all of us are trying to build in our companies is being undermined. And the result of all this is that employee disengagement is at an all-time high with newer employees, younger workers, people from underrepresented backgrounds being hurt the hardest. And all of this because we have lost the energy that comes from in-person collaboration and the connections and insights that emerge when you're walking the halls and you're meeting spontaneously with people. This can't be the future of work. And the good news is, it doesn't have to be. Our vision for the future of work isn't based solely on communication. It's based on providing a platform that enables real human connection, recreating the spontaneous interaction and in-person energy that builds those connections while maintaining all the remote work advantages that some employees have grown to love. And we're making this vision a reality with the Aurea Future of Work platform. So imagine, you're the managing director of a $40 billion global manufacturer of technology hardware, operations all over the world. Instead of visiting each location in person on a quarterly basis, you move seamlessly between all these different workspaces. You start your day in the virtual global auditorium at headquarters where all 135,000 employees across 42 countries are gathered. You bound up onto the virtual stage, open the floor town hall style to answer questions and hear ideas. In the middle of the discussion, an employee whispers a thought in your ear, which sparks a new idea that you task your CMO to explore. From there, boom, you're instantaneously transported to Geneva where you join your board in a virtual conference room to review the term sheet of a planned acquisition. And you and your team review documents shared across interactive billboards. And you lock eyes with your attorney who gives you a subtle nod that the deal's gonna happen. You leave the board behind to work out some details and head to one of your newest manufacturing facilities where you congratulate your team on 365 days 
of accident-free operation and double-digit growth in quality and productivity, the rich imagery and incredibly crisp, better than being there experience allows you to walk through the massive factory, engaging directly with the workers, managers, and engineers who deliver this success. And thanks to real-time audio translation, you can hear their stories and share your appreciation in their native language. It feels as if you are there in front of them as their faces swell with pride and they graciously accept your recognition. And finally, before leaving the factory, you learn of a product issue. You quickly assemble a team of engineers to diagnose the problem. But instead of squinting at a tiny screen share, you and your colleagues use a massive 3D holographic schematic that's suspended in air so everyone can touch and spin and manipulate. Your engineering lead gets up, quickly points the defective part, and models out a solution in real time, heading off a potential crisis. Now, we call this rich, hyper-connected work environment the business metaverse. It is a mixed reality environment that levels the playing field for all employees, creating a sense of broad inclusion by being there, irrespective of where an employee is or who they are. Our contention is that this is the killer app for 5G networks, and this should be what carriers should be talking to their enterprise customers about. Because all of your enterprise customers are wrestling with the future of work, and without 5G, this vision can exist, and that's why we need you, the carriers. And while what we've described may feel like something that's decades away, we're actually delivering a version of this technology today. Thousands of global enterprises like Apple, Dell, Daimler, Morgan Stanley are using Aurea to power their hybrid work right now. Employees are able to walk the hall, engage spontaneous interactions, meet new people, and respond to new ideas. And in the years to come, as networks evolve to deliver more bandwidth, the Aurea Future of Work platform is going to evolve right along with it, taking advantage of every ounce of that improvement and enterprise customers will come to rely on the network as their new center of work. So, our mission is to create a work experience that's both better than in-person and better than remote. Because Jamie Dimon is partly right. The way we are doing remote work today is kind of miserable. And that's why we need a profound orientation shift away from communication to building those connections. And when that happens, carriers can take the trillions of dollars that would have been spent on buildings and real estate and instead bring it onto their bottom line. And we're already talking with a number of different carriers about selling this future of work vision and the network capability that comes with it to their enterprise customers. And we'd love to talk with you and also let you experience everything that I just described firsthand here at Cloud City. So if you're attending virtually, go to the Aurea booth in the Future of Work district in Cloud City Online. But for those of you here, you need to absolutely step into our holodeck, it's right over there, and experience the business metaverse for yourself. It will literally blow your mind. We can make this happen together. So let's get to work. Thank you. Thank you so much, Scott. Would you like to come and join us on the cloud? Yeah, I'd love to. Thank City you, Chloe. Sofa. Well done. Thank you so much for opening the stage of for us course. here in Barcelona. It's been an absolute pleasure. I, I really loved that bit you said there about it's not just about communication. It's about having that human connection, and that's what's missing, and that's what the future of work needs. Now, before we delve into any audience questions, I had a couple I wanted to ask you myself. So you started your presentation. You said the future has not been fully defined yet. Yeah. I want to ask you, whose responsibility is it to define the future? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a collective responsibility, right? We're trying to help 
I talk to all of the HR leaders of our customers and they're struggling with it. It's a big unknown right now, right? You've got some companies that are fully embracing remote work. You've got others that are completely rejecting it. I would say the majority are trying to figure out hybrid, but hybrid introduces a lot of implications of, am I gonna create an uneven playing field where the people that are in the office have a better experience, better access to people and information than the people that aren't in the office. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what we're struggling to try to eliminate, that, that uneven playing field. Okay, so on that note, and I know obviously we're here to talk about telecoms, but are there any industries in particular that have undergone this rapid change already that you've noticed and thought, that's what we should be doing. We should be taking inspiration from that industry and the way that they're working. Is there anyone that stands out? I think if you look at how companies are embracing the future of work, it very much is different by vertical market. Yeah. So technology companies, I would say, by and large, have been very comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. There are a number of technology companies, ours included, that are 100% remote. Um, then on the other side of the coin, there are industries like investment banking, where there's been a number of sort of public in the press proclamations, uh, where they're not comfortable with it because they believe a big part of their culture and mentoring and information sharing mm -hmm. is in person. And so I don't know that I would say that one of those is necessarily the leader. Mm -hmm. There's lots of different models that are gonna be tested out here over the course of the next several years and hopefully a leader will emerge. Of course, it's gonna be quite exciting, sure I think. Will be. Um, just a reminder to our audience here, if you do have a question for Scott or any of our live speakers, please do just raise your hand and a member of the production team will bring a microphone over to you. But for now, I do have a couple more questions. Um, you spoke about, obviously, this new thinking of the future of work, of course. That, that's what this session is all about. Which old ideas do you think need to be laid to rest once and for all? What has become completely obsolete? I think the one thing that everybody would agree with based on this remote work experiment that we've sort of had shoved upon us mm -hmm. is that individual work where you're not requiring to be in meetings or, or it's not dependent upon you navigating or building relationships, you're working on a paper, you're working on a spreadsheet, that actually works great from home. Arguably, it works better, Edit. right, because you're less distracted. And so I think there's general consensus that individual work works perfectly fine from home with mm -hmm. today's technology. It goes back to that piece you said, it's about that human connection. That's where there's a gap. That's what we need to address and that's how we move forward. Exactly. Yeah, great. And so obviously you know a lot about this, but also you are a leader. And I really want to highlight that because I think it's important we don't forget the last 18 months and the change that the world has seen as a leader what have you learned from the challenges that you've faced about how to manage teams through change or how to manage customers through change? What is the standout lessons that you've come back with? It was interesting for us, because I, as I described, we're a 100% remote company mm -hmm. and we were a 100% remote company prior to the pandemic. Yeah. And so when the pandemic hit, it didn't impact us operationally all that much, mm -hmm. but it was impacting our customers tremendously. Yeah. And so we spent a great deal of time working with customers that were already using our technology, but now helping them use it from a, we're all in the office together model to a, now everybody's suddenly remote model. And that, that required quite a bit of education and changing the way we interacted with our customers to be able to support them through that change. Okay, I'm interested. You mentioned that they went through a couple of changes, a lot of your customers. What kind of changes are we talking about? Was it literally just managing this new remote environment or was it bigger than that? Well, it started out as that, right? Managing this remote environment, but then it also started to uh, deal with some of the issues that we were just talking about up here, which yeah. is they're noticing that connections are fraying and that people aren't mm -hmm. interacting as much and what can they do to create some of the water cooler conversations that are no longer happening, right? The mental health issues that people have yes. um, being lonely, loneliness pronounced, right? Mm -hmm. Zoom fatigue for anyone that spent hours on conference call <laughs> is a real thing, right? And so all of those issues started to emerge and they were wrestling with them one after the other. Mm -hmm. 
I can imagine. It's been a pretty stressful time for many. Yeah. So, okay, we've talked about the past 18 months. Let's move to something a bit more positive, which is the future. Yeah. So what is the roadmap, the next five years as you see it? I believe the roadmap is a lot of experimentation. Mm -hmm. There's going to be all kinds of different work models that are going to be explored. All kinds of different new technologies are, are emerging to support this, including what we're doing. Um, we don't know, and that's what makes this so exciting. Yeah. Uh, but the promise of, of all this is amazing, right? It literally is you can hire the best talent from mm -hmm. around the world. You aren't constrained by things like physical geography anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think in terms of global employment and growth mm -hmm. and all of the, the great economic development, the opportunities that this creates are tremendous. And so I'm super excited yeah. for the next five years to see how all this plays no, out. Me too. Yeah. And I think it's interesting you mentioned the thing about talent because that's another really important factor, isn't it? That's changed over the last 18 months, but arguably for the better because like you say, there's no boundaries anymore to accessing these talent pools. We don't need geography when we're working remotely. Yeah, when, I, when I'm changed jobs you know, a decade or more ago. Mm -hmm. Someone had to buy my house, maybe the company was gonna buy my house, I put my stuff in a moving van, I had to go, right? It was just yeah. huge economic friction and huge life change to be able to change jobs. Now, when Oria hires somebody, boom, here's your credentials, you're online, we're ready mm -hmm. to go, right? Wherever you are. No, that's it. Um, so we have had a question through from one of our virtual audience members. They can't come up on the stage, but they did want me to ask on their behalf. Okay. And they've said, we're in the early stages of the seismic shift, like you mentioned, but even at this point, do you think there are any standout examples in the telco sector that we could learn from? Uh, of the telecom carriers that I've been working with, I think one of the most forward thinking has been Deutsche Telekom. Yeah. Uh, they are, they are embracing a hybrid work model, mm -hmm. but they recognize that by embracing a hybrid work model, what they are going to be losing is that in-person collaboration and connection. Yeah. And so we are working with them. They're one of our partners in helping define, well, what are the capabilities we need to be able to create that? And it's not just you know, the walk in the halls. It's like, how do we create a spontaneous interaction? Should we have like a employee virtual meet and greet? where we just assemble random employees together so they can have sort of spontaneous conversations, right? All of these different kinds of ideas mm -hmm. are emerging from them, but they're thinking about all of that, right? Yeah, and so I've been very impressed with their HR leadership on this issue. Yeah, it sounds great. And yeah. so one final question from me. What is the one message you want our audiences, both physical and virtual, to take away from your keynote? What is that one punchy message? There's a huge opportunity for telecom carriers here. And that opportunity is generational. It's measured in trillions of dollars. But it's not just going to happen. Mm -hmm. It won't happen if, if it's just Zoom and Skype and email. It's only gonna happen if we create a virtual work environment that people are like, you know what? I don't lose anything from not being in the office now. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. And if we can do that together, it's gonna be enormous and transformational for the world. That's true. Scott, thank you so much. That's all we've got time for. We've learned so much compressed into 30 minutes. I really appreciate it, especially really, the key thing is that the future of work certainly looks exciting, I think, for all of us. And don't forget to everybody watching, all of our content sessions can be found on Cloud City Online each day. So if you want to have another watch or you've even missed one of our speakers, please do just check out our On Demand videos but Scott enjoy the rest of the show Thank here you. at Visit the, the Holodeck. Fira. It's awesome. <laughs>